Reading is fundamental and also, clearly, very dangerous. I'm reviewing Netflix's original series, Marianne, giving you my pros, cons, trigger warnings, and my twisted final grade. Hey Twisted People, it's your Twisted Girl here, and today I'm reviewing Netflix's original series, Mary Ann. So like, the first 90% of this video is going to be spoiler-free, per usual, because, you know, my reviews are normally spoiler-free, although I do try to go in-depth with my explanations and concepts and things of that nature without giving spoilers, of course. But the last 10% of this video, and don't worry, for those of you who have not seen this series before, I will give you a warning. I do want to go into some of my theories conspiracy theories and things of that nature when it comes to potentially season two or just what the heck happened in season one so that will be spoiler filled so stick around for that if you want to you know talk about what happened in the actual series but the first 90 percent of this of course will be spoiler free review Emma, a famous and successful French horror writer, is forced to return to her hometown after the woman who haunted her dreams as a child begins to reappear. Emma returns to her hometown, sending her down a new path of terror. Marianne is a series that embodies classic horror, but also does a good job of adding its own unique style to the mix. It's genuinely terrifying, but also somehow manages to be a lot of fun. Characters. I was kind of worried that I was going to hate the protagonist in this series. Um, in the in the first like fifteen to twenty minutes, she was very obnoxious. And I, like I said, I don't think you have to love a main character or the protagonist. I think though you have to be somewhat invested in them, and that doesn't mean you have to love them, but you have to somewhat be interested or care or think that they have a fighting chance to at least win in some regards and so I was a little worried with the way they portrayed the main character in the first 15 or 20 minutes that I wasn't and most viewers wouldn't feel that way when it came to the character like invested in the journey and it's like how are you going to go on an eight episode journey with someone like at an hour each that's eight hours with a character that you're not invested in their journey you just don't but they very much turned that around so that was compelling and also with that it wasn't just the protagonist that was compelling it was also the um supporting characters around her they really did a great job in creating relationships that were effective that resonated and really helped tell the story really painted the story it wasn't like a distraction in between jump scares or something it was like it it made the story it enriched the story the characters the layers the relationships the history of the relationships it all came together really well done and so i was quite impressed with that because sometimes it's a give or take sometimes you're just waiting for characters to die and other times you really care about them to the point where you you like you almost don't want them in a horror picture because you just want to like protect them and i think that there was a happy medium when it came to this series scares okay so this is a scary series it's seriously seriously scary i um I, I found myself jumping a couple of times, and not like on some jump scare stuff, like, oh my gosh, something is coming out of the dark, but like, I am genuinely anticipating and very worried about what's going to happen next, in terms of the plot, in terms of where this is going, and so, uh, that was amazing, and they, and they actually did a very good job of keeping that up throughout all eight episodes which can be hard to do right like usually sometimes with a horror series there's like you know let's say there's like eight episodes in this particular one maybe there's like perhaps three to four that are truly terrifying and the other ones are just kind of setups and no this series made it so that each episode had some genuinely horrifying moments throughout yeah some were had more than others but each one you know, each one totally was justified in being considered a horror episode. And so it was just, I was just genuinely terrified, which you know I loved. Plot. This was a really interesting story. It's such a compelling 
premise. I mean, first the premise for one. I mean, yes, we've seen this before, you know, a horror writer. I mean, Stephen King does it all the time, usually. You know, at least one of his characters is a writer of some sort, usually horror or something, which is kind of like an author self-insert. But in this particular case, you know, you had this woman, this female horror writer and so she goes back to her hometown and you think okay yeah she goes back to her hometown and it's like their secrets but they did it in such a unique way and the way the story unfolds I'm telling you I don't think you'll guess where it's going I mean yeah no I don't think you'll really guess it's not predictable at all the way it goes what's going to happen the kind of characters that they're going to be which characters are going to be important in the plot line it really does a very good job of just setting up such a compelling and engrossing story and i think this was probably like the first time in a while where i've watched something and i could not necessarily guess what was going to happen towards the middle or the end and that's always great because you know we've seen it all a lot of time there's no story that has not been told so even in this regard this plot line is similar to other stuff you might have seen before but they do it in such a unique way that it throws you off and you really are not able to I think figure out what's going to happen a little contrived at times this is like a real small small con because it wasn't prevalent throughout the whole series but there were moments where it was like okay you could have chosen a different thing to do and that probably could have made it so you avoided this really terrible thing that just happened. And it, it happened a few times where it stood out, but only, and actually this is to the uh, compliment to the series that so much other stuff wasn't contrived and it, everything else flowed so well. So when moments like that happened, those contrived moments here and there was like, wow, that's like a sore thumb. It's like, it stands out so much because everything else has worked out so well. Witchcraft portrayal. So yeah, um, it's once again, another minor thing only because I'm only calling it out because it's so overdone. This idea, because I mean, and this isn't a spoiler, because the premise of it is the idea that um, Emma writes these stories based off of this witch. And the idea is that this witch is starting to, like, appear in her life and, and in her old hometown and what that is. And, you know, it's a, it's a menacing creature of some sort. And I do think the portrayal of witchcraft, I think they, you know, once again, it's a little bit lazy writing when it's the whole idea that all witches consort with the devil and they want to, like, screw a demon and bring forth the apocalypse. It's kind of an easy, quote-unquote, monster to go with. Um, although that's not, like, the whole plot line. That's just the premise of it. But I think in, uh, you know as following through with that and some of the concepts of what they explored, I do think it, they kind of fell into that trope a little too easily. <laughs> Suicide, child death, animal death and endangerment. <laughs> Marianne is definitely twisted approved. I mean, it was just such a terrifying series. I... Man, there's just so... I mean, I, maybe it was because also that I'm a writer myself of fiction and nonfiction that it was so compelling to me and the way they did it in intertwining real um, stories by Edgar Allan Poe, you know, Lovecraft, all of those, and, and playing into the themes of the story. It was so haunting and also so terrifying that it's definitely Twisted Approved. And honestly, my Twisted Final Grade is A. And the show does such a good job of showing moments of joy, too, in such a effective way that it doesn't seem, like, jarring. So it totally works out, and I love when that's a thing, because that's life. That's the balance of it. There's horror, there's tragedy, and there's comedy. There's a very thin line between tragedy and comedy, right, as they say. And so I think this this series does such a good job of uh, exemplifying that. Okay, y'all, so that was my spoiler-free review of my Twisted Final Grade. And stick around if you want to talk briefly about some theories that I have about the series that are very much spoiler-filled. And if you're not sticking around for this next part of the video, or if you're coming back after you finish the series, be sure to subscribe. Press that subscribe button so you are the first to know when I post my videos. Also, press the chime button, that little bell, so you get, like, notifications when I basically post as well. So basically two things I want to 
talk about, which is one, the idea of uh, Emma being pregnant, oh my gosh, by probably like the Antichrist. And two, what is the city by the sea when it comes to uh, the apocalypse bringing forth demons and what was Marianne trying to bring forth? That was like a great cliffhanger, I think, almost to the point where I'm a little scared that they might not renew it for a season two. But I will also say that even if they don't renew it for a season two, that's kind of the perfect way to end the series in a way, too, on that cliffhanger. Like, what happens now? She's pregnant. Does she get rid of this baby that clearly is probably a demon spawn? Uh, Does she try to raise it, nature versus nurture? I thought it worked in terms of the concept. I will say, like I said earlier in my review, that... You know, I couldn't predict a lot of the stuff that was happening. I thought there would be moments where I'm like, oh, that's clearly not the real person. And then, like, stuff would happen, and they would throw me off where I'm like, oh, I guess that was them. And then later on, it would be like, oh, I was right, but they threw me off so much that it made me doubt myself. And that's what I mean by, you know, this wasn't super predictable. Even if eventually it came out the way you might have predicted it initially. They did such a good job of throwing you off. And that's the same thing with this pregnancy thing. Like when Sebi came to her window and he was like, I'm always clumsy, but yet I, you know, climbed to your window. The first thing I thought like, well, that means it's not really him because he never did that before. But then they threw me off and I'm like, well, maybe that is Sebi. And so, so much stuff happened in between. So when she finally goes to him, I was genuinely shocked. I was like, oh my gosh, that really wasn't him. That was a demon. Oh my gosh. So I think, um, Well, we know if she's that, like, perplexed about it, she's probably thinking she doesn't want to get rid of it. So, get rid of, you know, have an abortion and whatnot, even if it may be a demon spawn. And I think that's going to be an interesting concept of how she deals with that going into season two, if there's going to be a season two. Although, you know, thinking about it, I kind of wonder if you need a season two. Like, what would she do for the next for the next eight episodes? You know, figure out whether or not she wants to have it. How fast would it grow? What would she need to do? Can she even abort it? So I don't know if we need that. I don't know if lightning would strike twice. This was such a concise series that I almost feel like they need to leave it alone now. Like, they need to leave it at the season one that we got and just, that's that. That was a great miniseries, a great exploration that I don't think we need necessarily a season two. I think I kind of like the idea that it's open-ended. Funny enough, Emma actually talks about that in the beginning of the series, doesn't she? Because she was about to go into retirement, right? And like they asked her, you know, what about it? And she had told the crowd, well, it's an open-ended thing. Sometimes that's great. And maybe, just maybe, that's what the producers and the writers are doing to us as well, leaving that open-ended idea of, hey, maybe you don't need to know what happens. I think that's pretty smart, actually, and kind of perfect. Okay, y'all, so that was my review and also my spoiler-filled theory about Marianne, the Netflix original series. Let me know what you think. Did you like my pros? Did you like my cons? Did you like the series? Are you wanting a season two, or do you think it's good where it ended and they should just leave it open-ended and let our minds fester and, and fear what could be in the beyond of death and all that great stuff in the darkness? Let me know. Comment down below. And also, so be sure to subscribe so that you're the first to know when I post my videos of all things horror and dark fantasy. Thanks for watching.